we mentioned that nothing that happens to you can be bad, but what you choose to do can be bad. Just like you can't have a bad tree. You can have a diseased tree. You can't have a bad tree. Only a human being who has freedom of choice can do something bad, which means choosing what you should not have chosen. Because bad means something that should not have happened. But here's where it becomes complicated. Nothing that ever happens to me is bad because everything happens for a reason. But what if you decide to hurt me? You have freedom of choice. You can do what you shouldn't have chosen to do. And what you chose to do is to hurt me. Now I got hurt. It shouldn't have happened. Because you shouldn't have chosen that. So the pain that you're giving me should not have happened because you shouldn't have done that. So we're back to the problem again. Things can happen to me that shouldn't happen because of other people. So what we've come to the conclusion so far is if something happens to you, you're God's victim. And God always has a reason. But when you are someone else's victim, when you're victimized by another human being, oh, that shouldn't happen. That's bad. Well, it turns out no human being can victimize you. Can't. Because freedom of choice that the person has ends when they've made their choice. Beyond that, he has no control. I think so. <laughs> freedom of choice means you can choose to be bad. Will you succeed at being bad? That's not in your control. Once you let go of the arrow, you have no control. So if you decide to kill somebody and you point the gun and you pull the trigger, that's it. Your freedom of choice is over. Will your victim die? That's not up to you. God decides that. So if you decide to kill somebody and you shoot at them but miss, you're a murderer. You just can't shoot straight. <laughs> because all you can do to be a murderer is to choose to do it. After that, it's not under your control. So sometimes the victim will die, sometimes he won't die. Who determines that? Not you. Like the gang that couldn't shoot straight? You decide to rob a bank, you get in the car, you drive off to the bank, and you get stuck in traffic. <laughs> Are you a bank robber? Yes. Did you rob a bank? No. Because you're not good at being bad. <laughs> you're not as talented as you think, but you are, you're bad. So freedom of choice means literally that. You are free to choose. You're not free to do whatever you want to do. I mean, if every time somebody wanted to kill someone, he succeeded, we wouldn't exist anymore. We'd all be dead. <laughs> Hitler tried to kill all the Jews. We can't get over the fact that he killed six million. But that's not what he set out to do. So why didn't he succeed? Because you don't get to decide how successful you are. You only to choose what you want. You have freedom to make a choice. You don't have the freedom to kill anybody you want to kill. Which means you are never the victim of someone else's choice. I wanted to insult this guy. <laughs> he was annoying. I was speaking 
And I wanted to put him in his place and really insult him. And I said something really insulting. He didn't get it. <laughs> Went right over his head and he wasn't insulted. So did I have my freedom of choice? Yeah. And I chose to hurt this guy's feelings. Didn't happen. Why? Because it wasn't meant to happen. So does that interfere with my freedom of choice? No. I chose and I acted on my choice. The guy was too stupid to get the insult. <laughs> so, even when you try to hurt yourself, some guy decides to kill himself. He goes up to the 87th floor of the Empire State Building. True story. And he jumps out the window. Pretty good, no? I mean, if you want to kill yourself, that's almost guaranteed. But the wind up there is very strong. It blew him back against the building, and he landed on the windowsill of the 86th floor. Had a really bad headache. <laughs> so you see, he had freedom of choice. Chose to kill himself. Not today. Ain't going to happen. Because God decides the outcome of your choice. You are never the victim of another human being. Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. He turned out to be the viceroy of Egypt. And they come down and they realize that it's him. And they're sure that he's going to take revenge. And he says, I'm not even angry at you. Yeah, you made bad choices. That's your problem. But what happened to me? That was my fate. And it all turned out good. So you get your act together and worry about your bad intentions, but I got no complaints. In other words, what happens to me is not a direct result of what you chose. And we have this experience every day, ten times a day. You think you're going to do something, it doesn't turn out that way. So who's in charge? And if God is in charge, does that mean you don't have free choice? You have exactly that, free choice. Now, if you want to use your free choice properly, somebody hurts you. Your wife, your child, your parents, your friends, they did something terrible that they should not have done. Now you think that that's why you're sitting here? Nope. There are people who did worse things than you, and they're not sitting here. There are people who have worse friends than you and worse family than you, and they're not sitting here. So did the family member or the friend who tried to hurt you, who meant to hurt you, did they succeed? They only succeeded in making bad choices. What happened to you is between you and God, not a victim of a human being. So now you have a choice. You can either act like a victim And then when people come to visit you, you're expecting them to apologize to you. You're expecting them to bolster your feelings and your self-esteem. You're acting like a victim. You're needy. Don't do that. If your children come to visit you, act like a father. Talk like a father. Give the child what they need to hear from you. You're the father, not the victim. And even though you're locked up in here and they're out there, so what? You're still a father. When they come here, teach them something. Show them how to be a decent human being. Don't quit. And don't act like a victim. So here again, the choice between being needed and being needy. Don't ever be needy with your children. Don't ever be needy with your wife. Don't ever be needy at all. Under all circumstances, 
take the position of the giver. You can make a difference for them. Be a role model. That sounds strange. You're sitting in here, you're an inmate, you're being punished for your crimes, and you're a role model? Yes. Yes. And when you act like a role model, you're even greater than the guys out there. Because you're not letting your existence rob you of your life. I have a friend who was uh, inside for eight years. He never stopped teaching. He would write letters to his children, telling them right from wrong, encouraging them to be good, to be strong, do the right thing, be moral, be nice. He never stopped fathering, because you can father from the inside just as well as you can father from the outside. Unless you think fathering means taking your kid to a ball game. That's not fathering. You can go to a ball game with anybody. So, here is again. The freedom of choice means you can respond to the other person's freedom of choice with freedom. You don't have to be their victim. You can be their teacher. So somebody comes to you who did, did you wrong, who hurt you, and they feel like they did this to you, <laughs> and they apologize, I'm so sorry for sending you to jail. Say, Excuse me, you're not God. You didn't send me to jail. Get off your high horse. You're just a guy who makes bad choices. That doesn't make you God. <laughs> that should be your attitude. Like Joseph said to his brothers, you think you sent me to Egypt? What do you think, you're God? No, you're just jealous, petty people who made bad choices. That doesn't put you in a position of authority. So don't be a victim. Be a teacher. Be a role model. Nothing stopping you. Just, you know, nobody ever thinks that way. So surprise your visitors. Next time they come, walk in with a different attitude. Hi, what can I do for you? They'll be impressed. And what can you do for them besides be a role model? And what more do they need from you besides being a role model? So how do you get to like the people you love but they hurt you? And so it's very hard to like them? That's only if you think they're God. They're not. They're just people, maybe even weaker than you. <laughs>